passion play as it is played today. Icaronis Teris Icon. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone's mad here. <laughs> In the years following my father's death, I think it's true to say that the house became my whole world. During the long period of mother's illness, the house often seemed so vast, so confidently real, that by comparison, I felt little more than a ghost haunting its corridors. Scarcely a word. That anything could exist beyond those melancholy walls. Until the night in 1901, when I first caught a glimpse of that other world. The world on the dark side. Mother? Mother? It's me. I brought you something to eat, please. I think you should try to eat some of this. Sorry I'm late, Commissioner. Problems out of town. What's up? There has been a riot at Arkham Asylum. That's what's up. The inmates seized control of the building early this morning. We don't know how it happened. They're holding the asylum staff hostage, making all kinds of crazy demands. We've had to send in furniture, store dummies, food, clothing. And... They say there's only one final demand. Thank God. They've been waiting to talk to you personally. I see. It's the Joker. Joker, are you there? This is Batman. What do you want? Well, hello, big boy. How's it hanging? Don't waste my time, Joker. Just tell me what it is you want. Oh, I think you can guess. We want you in here with us. In the madhouse, where you belong. And, and what if I say no? Well, we have so many friends in here, sweetheart. Say hello to Pearl. Such a crybaby, isn't she? <laughs> What's that noise? Can you hear it? Scratching. What's he doing? Pearl is 19 years old. She just started work in the kitchens here to earn some extra money. Pearl wants to be an artist, don't you, Pearl, darling? She just drew me a beautiful house. She drew it with this pencil, the one I just sharpened. <laughs> Open your eyes wide, Pearl. Beautiful blue. Oh. Jesus, no! You have half an hour. And bring a white stick. No. <laughs> no! Oh, Jesus, that poor girl. 
Batman, I'm I... going in there. Jim, can we talk? You okay? You know you don't have to go in there. Let me organize a SWAT team or something. No. This is something I do have to do. Listen, I can understand it, even if you're afraid. I mean, Arkham has a reputation. Afraid? Batman's not afraid of anything. It's me. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that the Joker may be right about me. Sometimes I... I question the rationality of my actions. And I'm afraid that when I walk through those asylum gates, when I walk into Arkham and those doors close behind me, it'll be just like coming home. I return to the family home on a cold spring morning in 1920, shortly after Mother's funeral. She opened her own throat with a pearl-handled razor. In the end, perhaps, it was for the best. I have to believe that. As the only child, I am to inherit the house and the acre of land upon which it stands. Alone in a gloom that smells of dust and childhood, I dedicate myself to the prevention of such suffering as my poor mother needs. And I begin to make my plans. For the first time in 12 years, I spend the night in my old room. I do not sleep well. My dreams are haunted by beating wings. And outside, far off, a dog barks on and on through the whole restless night. Next day, I return to Metropolis, where my family and I have been living for some time. I'm working at the State Psychiatric Hospital, and one of my patients today has been referred to me from Metropolis Penitentiary. His name is Martin Hawkins. Mad Dog Hawkins. I listen as he tells me how he was beaten and sexually abused by his father. I ask him why he chose to destroy only the faces and sexual organs of his victims. It was Virgin Mary's idea. She says it's the best way to stop the dirty sluts spreading their disease. And I ask him why he cuts his arms with a razor. Just to feel. Just to feel something. After two hours, he is taken back to the penitentiary to await trial. How many more like him must there be? Men whose only real crime is mental illness, trapped in the penal system with no hope of treatment. My course is clear. I tell my dear Constance and little Harriet that we will shortly be returning to my family home in Gotham City, there to begin its conversion into a facility for the treatment of the mentally ill. That night, I dream I'm a child again, lost in a funhouse. I find myself in the Hall of Mirrors. There are strangers in the mirrors. And I freeze, not daring to go any further. Not through that door. At last, my father comes looking for me. I beg him not to take me into the tunnel of love. We return by the way we entered. That night I dream that the mirror people have escaped from the glass and come looking for me. I wake sweating and adult, and for a moment, just a moment, I feel as though I'm back where I belong, back in the old house. Thank <laughs> you.
It's salt. Why don't you sprinkle some on me, honey? Aren't I just good enough to eat? <laughs> I'm here, Joker. Release the hostages. You heard him, folks. Hit the trail. Bye, Pearl. Let's do it again sometime. <laughs> but what about her eyes? You said... April Fool! <laughs> Cheer up, honey pie. Listen, how many brittle bone babies does it take Shut to... Up. Ooh, at home to Mr. Tetchioi. Loosen up, tight ass. Take your filthy hands off me. What's the matter? Have I touched a nerve? How is the boy wonder? Started shaving yet? Filthy degenerate. Flattery will get you nowhere. <laughs> You're in the real world now, and the lunatics have taken over the asylum. April Sweet is coming in! Millions of robins. No room. Hey, no room. Dear Lord, you the bear bloody Oh, daddy, you just made them stuff. I believe God is in a man. Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Let the feast of fools begin! Joker, I've had enough of this madness. Enough madness? Enough? And how do you measure madness? Not with rods and wheels and clocks, surely? You know, you look so pretty when you're mad. Kiss me, Charlie. <laughs> Ravish me. But no tongues, you hear? <laughs> Not on our first date! <laughs> You're in no position to issue warnings, Charlie. Not on your guilty secret. Now sit down and stay down before I think of something funny to do with you. Who are these people, Joker? You told me you'd release all the hostages. Well, we insisted on staying, Batman. I'm Ruth Adams. I'm the psychotherapist here. And this is dear old Doc Cavendish, our current administrator, a man who just loves to administer current to ECT patients. I have a duty to the state. I will not leave the asylum in the hands of of madmen. And while we are discussing duty, it looks like someone's done theirs on the floor. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Harvey. <laughs> Is it you again? <laughs> you, you, you trying to ruin my heels? I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help it. It takes so long to decide. So many options, I'm really sorry. Oh, oh, please, miss. Two-Face has pissed himself again. <laughs> Two-Face? Excuse me, Batman, but would really prefer it if you would call Harvey Dent by his real name. What have you done to him? Done? He's being cured. This place is a hospital, Batman, and we're here to treat people in case you'd forgotten. As a matter of fact, we've successfully tackled Harvey's obsession with duality. I'm sure you're familiar with his silver dollar. Scarred on one side, unmarked on the other. He used to make all his decisions with it, as though it somehow represented the contradictory halves of his personality. What we did was wean him off the coin and onto a die. That gave him six decision options instead of the former two. He did so well with the die that we've been able to move him onto a pack of tarot cards. That's 78 options open to him now, Batman. Next, we plan to introduce him to the I Ching. Soon, he'll have a completely functional judgmental facility that doesn't rely so much on black and white absolutes. But right now, he can't even make a simple decision, like going to the bathroom without consulting the cards. Seems to me you effectively destroyed the man's personality, Doctor. Sometimes, we have to pull down in order to rebuild Batman. Psychiatry's like that. You must admit, it's hard to imagine this place being conducive to anyone's mental health. You're going to hit me with all that local folklore now, right? 
secret passages, the ghost of Mad Amadeus Arkham, the door that's supposed to bleed, gothic crap. Well, you'll pardon me for saying so, but your techniques don't seem to have had much effect on the Joker. The Joker's a special case. Some of us feel he may be beyond treatment. In fact, we're not even sure if he can be properly defined as insane. His latest claim is that he's possessed by Baron Gedi, the voodoo loa. We're beginning to think it may be a neurological disorder, similar to Tourette syndrome. It's quite possible we may actually be looking at some kind of super sanity here. A brilliant new modification of the human perception, more suited to urban life at the end of the 20th century. Tell that to his victims. Unlike you and I, the Joker seems to have no control over the sensory information he's receiving from the outside world. He can only cope with that chaotic barrage of input by going with the flow. That's why some days he's a mischievous clown, others a psychopathic killer. He has no real personality. He creates himself each day. He sees himself as the Lord of Misrule and the world as a theater of the absurd. We card games, Dr. Ruth. You know me, I just adore card games. <laughs> well, I see two angels screwing in the stratosphere, a constellation of black holes, a biological process beyond the conception of man, a Jewish ventriloquist act locked in the trunk of a red Chevrolet. What about you, Batman? What do you see? Nothing. I don't see anything. Not even a cute little long-legged boy in swimming trunks. Stop wasting time, you ugly prancing bastard. Well, his hair's too. You know, that's if you don't mind. I say we take off his mask. I want to see his real face. Oh, don't be so predictable for Christ's sakes. That is his real face. And I want to go much deeper than that. I want him to know what it's like to have sticky fingers pick through the dirty corners of his mind. So let's start with a word association test, shall we, Ruthie? I don't really want to do this. Go ahead, Dr. Adams. I'm not afraid. It's just words. That's the spirit, Batman. Sticks and stones. I like a man who can take the pressure. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Just as the archangel subdued the old dragon, so shall I bend this house to my will. I will bring light to those dismal corridors of my childhood and will open up the locked doors and fill the empty rooms and set above it all an image of the triumph of reason over the irrational. Harriet is plagued by nightmares. I blame the Lewis Carroll, but she will insist on reading and rereading the books. Perhaps things will settle when the work on the house is finished. Perhaps one of the workmen must have dropped it. Mother. Uh, pearl. Handle. Revolver. Gun. Father. Father? Death. And? Stop. Stop. <laughs> In the fall of 1920, I am invited to Europe. I finally meet Professor Jung in Switzerland. And in England, I am introduced to the so-called wickedest man on earth, Alistair Crowley. I find him charming and highly educated. We discuss the symbolism of the Egyptian tarot, 
and he beats me at chess twice. I ran out of French cigarettes in the mid-Atlantic. I arrive home in time for Christmas and find the conversion of the house to be well underway. Constance surprises me with a wonderful addition to my aquarium. Japanese clownfish are a fascinating species. And then the telephone rings. When a dominant female dies, one of the males in her entourage will actually change sex and assume her former role. For some reason, I am reminded of the French name for the victim of an April Fool prank. Poison Diavril, April Fish. I experience an inexplicable frisson of deja vu. It transpires that Martin Hawkins has escaped from the penitentiary and the police would like my considered opinion as to his state of mind. I tell them he may be highly dangerous and I leave them to it. It's not my problem. Not tonight. Is something wrong? No, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Harriet is enchanted by the cuckoo clock. I have brought her from Switzerland. I pray that it might take her mind from the bad dreams. And she is so very intelligent and perfectly beautiful. Then I remind myself that all intelligent children suffer bad dreams. I almost wish she need never grow up. Dim, didim, 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 didim. Uh, it's getting late. Time to begin the evening's entertainment, I think. If you're feeling up to it. <laughs> up to what? A nice little game of hide and seek. You have one hour, sweetheart, and there's no way out of the building. There's the Scarecrow, and Mr. Clayface, and the strange Dr. Destiny, of course. He seems so frail in that wheelchair, but all he has to do is look at you, and you stop being real. <laughs> He does so want to look at you, darling. <laughs> oh, 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 and don't let's forget the croc. He came up out of that damp, dark cellar this morning, dragging his chains behind him. They all want to see you, so why don't you just run along now? <laughs> I don't take orders from you. Well, this guy goes into the hospital, okay? His wife's just had a baby, and he can't wait to see them both. So, he meets the doctor, and he says, Oh, oh, doc, I've been so worried. How are they? Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the doctor smiles and says, They're fine. Just fine. Your wife's been delivered of a healthy baby boy, and they're both in tip-top form. You're one lucky guy. <laughs> So, 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 so the guy rushes into the maternity ward with his flowers, but it's empty. His <laughs> wife's bed is empty. Doc, <gasps> he says, and turns around, and the doctor and all the nurses wave their arms and scream in his face. <laughs> April Fool, your wife's dead and the babies are spastic. <laughs> Get it? What a senseless waste of human life. Now, Batman, <gasps> run. The game ends at midnight. Run! Run! How dare you embarrass me that way, Bruce? It's only a movie, for God's sake. It's not real. Bruce, I'm warning you. If you don't stop crying and act like a grown-up, I'm leaving you right here. Understand? 
I'm leaving you right here. promised him an hour. He's only been gone ten minutes. This is ridiculous. Who do you think, Dad? The moon is so beautiful. What? It's a big silver dollar. Flipped by God. And it landed scarred side up. See? So he made the world. Jesus Christ. Can I get a decent conversation in this place? We're all insane. Joker. We're bored. Oh, all right then. Let's just pretend it's been an hour. Spring is a deceitful season, and April 1st, 1921, is cold. Mercilessly cold. Connie, did you know the front door was wide open? Connie? Are you in? I see my wife first, my dear Constance, her body is in pieces. Harriet lies nearby, undescribably violated, almost idly, I wonder where her head is. And then I look at the doll's house, and the doll's house looks at on my mother's wedding dress and I kneel down, I kneel down in that nursery abattoir. It all seems perfectly rational, perfectly, perfectly rational. Later, I find myself <laughs> sobbing, choking, retching into the lavatory bowl. Is this what it all comes down to? All our dreams and hopes and aspirations. Nothing but vomit? Oh God, I'm afraid. I'm so afraid. I think I may be ill. Thank <laughs> you. 
so glad you could make it. I have so many things to tell you. You must be feeling quite fragile. By now I expect this house, it does things to the mind. Now, where was I? Where am I? Where will I be? Ah, yes. The apparent disorder of the universe is simply a higher order, an implicate order beyond our comprehension. That's why children interest me. They're all mad, you see. But in each of them, I see an implicate adult order out of chaos. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> to know them is to know myself. Little girls especially. Little blonde girls. Little shameless bitches. Oh God, God help us all. Sometimes, sometimes I think the asylum is a head. We're inside a huge head that dreams us all into being. Perhaps it's your head, Batman. Arkham is a looking glass, and we are you. In spite of everything, the Elizabeth Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane opens its doors officially on schedule in November 1921. One of my first patients is Martin Hawkins. Mad dog. He delights in the recounting to me every detail of the atrocities he inflicted upon Constance and Harriet. He giggles and drools and tells me they begged him to abuse them. He calls my daughter a whore and I listen. I treat him for six months. I am praised for my courage and compassion. And on April 1st, 1922, one year to the day, I strap him into the electric shop couch. And I burn the filthy bastard. It is treated as an accident. These things happen. There is ozone and the smell of burnt skin on my nostrils, but I feel nothing. I take to patrolling the corridors between the hours of three and four in the morning. I visit the secret room offered in order that I might keep my journal up to date. Routine is important, I think. A good routine diverts the mind from morbid imaginings. Sometimes I am sure I hear hysterical laughter from a cell I know to be empty. I tape over the mirror in my study. The laughter ceases and I return to my ritual perambulations. My movements through the house have become as formalized as ballet, and I feel that I have become an essential part of some incomprehensible biological process. The house is an organism hungry for madness. It is the maze that dreams. And I am lost. Oh, a pilgrim come into my presence, pilgrim. Gaze upon the Lord, thy God. More, please, do it again. Zeus, Arthenophilus, part Man, part woman, electricity inflames my brain, voltage, current, the fire of heaven, look here, I've saved it all, 
there's power in it, you see. Children 
sing my name over and over again. Arkham, Arkham, Arkham. I'm falling. Oh, mother, what tree is this? What rooms are these? I am at this on the pine. Christ on the cedar, Odin on the world ash, Hamon the windy tree, for nine whole nights wounded with the spear, dedicated to Odin, myself to myself, I must see my reflection to prove I still exist, outside I hear the dragon coming closer, closer, Desperately, I peel the tape from the mirror, breaking my fingernails, strip by strip, until I stand revealed in the glass, and I stare into the old familiar eyes. Mother! I must have fainted then, for it is morning. When next I open my eyes, no longer able to tell where the dragon ended and I begin. Yet am I not the hero, the man of destiny? Have I not confronted the great dragon? Where then is my grail, my treasure hoard, my final reward? Good evening, Batman. Dr. Cavendish! Don't come near him, Batman. He'll cut me. Just keep back. You freed the inmates. You allowed this to happen. Why, Cavendish? Now, listen. I only did what had to be done. You read the book on the table beside you and you'll see. Go on. It's Amadeus Arkham's journal. Go on, read it. I've marked the place for you. Read it, you'll see. And suddenly, the longed for revelation comes in the form of a memory my mind had suppressed. It is 1920. Trees thrash in the dark under a restless sky. Rain rattles the windows. Why? Why have I come here? Mother, please, there's nothing. And why am I so afraid? Every night, every night. Beneath the bed, great wings begin to beat. I am not mad. Mother, it's come for me. I am not mad, but God help me. I see it. I see the thing that has haunted and tormented my poor mother these long years. I see it, and it is a bat. A bat. Oh, my poor mother. Don't let it take me. Please, don't let it. It won't take you, I promise. Don't be afraid, Mother. I love you. I understand now what my memory tried to keep from me. Madness is born in the blood. It is my birthright, my inheritance, my destiny. I shall contain the presences that roam these rooms and narrow stairways. I shall surround them with the bars and walls and electrified fences and pray they never break free. I am the dragon's bride, the son of the widow. Leather wings enfold me. You see now? You understand? You who've kept this place supplied with poor mad souls for years. You who fed the hungry house 
Do you see? You are the bat. No. I... I'm just a man. I'm not fooled by that cheap disguise. You know what you are. Arkham tried to kill his stockbroker in 1929. That's what they finally locked him away for. Did you know that? It didn't stop him. He read the Golden Bow. He studied the shamanistic practices. And he knew that only ritual, only magic could contain the bat. So do you know what he did? He scratched a binding spell into the floor of his cell. He used his fingernails. Can you imagine that? His fingernails! It took years. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? I see now the virtue in madness. For this country knows no law nor any boundary. I pity the poor shades confined to the elucidine prison that is sanity. All things are possible here, and I am what madness has made me, whole and complete and free at last. Finished. Get someone up here quickly. It's finished. Oh, his, his hands. Who is this man, Doctor? I'm Arkham. I'm home where I belong. He gave everything. Everything. But it still wasn't enough. Two years ago, I found this hidden room. Read the journal then, too. I just couldn't stop thinking about what Arkham had said, and I realized it was my destiny to finish what he started. I set a trap for the bat. You see, I surrounded the asylum with a circle of salt so it couldn't escape again. And now, well... Dr. Cavendish, Charles... Shut up, you ignorant cow! Cavendish, you're sick. You need help. I'm sick. Have you looked in a mirror lately? Have you? Cavendish! No! Jesus! Ah. Uh. Mommy's boy. Mommy's boy. No. Mommy's boy. Mommy's boy. God's sake! Do something! No! Mommy! No! Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. His throat. He got what he deserved. Come on. I didn't mean to. I really didn't. I take it this passage is the way out. Yes. Yes, it must be. I... I think it's this way. This way out. I know. Do you still have Two Faces coin? Yes, I... Oh, Christ. I just killed someone. Just give me the coin. You're going back in, aren't you? You're going to undo all my work. What are you? Stronger than them. Stronger than this place. I have to show them. That's insane. Exactly. Arkham was right. Sometimes it's only madness that makes us what we are. We're destined to be crabs. The bat! It's the bat! The bat's destroying everything! You should have never allowed him in here, Joker. He's too dangerous. Uh, that's right. Blame me. Go on. You're free. You're all free. Oh, we know that already. But what about you? Have you come to claim your kingly robes? Or do you just want us to put you out of your misery? 
like the pussy creature you are. <laughs> Why don't we let Two Face decide what to do with me? <gasps> no, I can't. Really, I. Harvey, brilliant. If the unmarked face comes up, he goes free. If it's the scarred face, he dies here. Okay. He goes free. Parting is such a sweet sorrow, dearest. Still, you can't say we didn't show you a good time. <laughs> Enjoy yourself out there. In the asylum. <laughs> Just don't forget, if it ever gets too tough, there's always a place for you here. <laughs> Who cares for you? You're nothing but a pack of cards. If you like this video, then subscribe to the Lone Riders YouTube channel.